The story begins with the figure of the runner-up to the throne of the Golden Group named Kong Jae Sung. He is the only grandson of the family that owns the largest shopping mall business. Jae Sung's specialty is shopping. He always managed to get special limited edition items, beating the hairs to the throne in several other countries. So he got the nickname Louis the King of Shopping. By today, he managed to get a stylish special edition number one sports jacket. Jai Sung, what everyone called him Louis, lived in a big castle because his grandma was always worried about him, probably because his parents died in an accident. Now in a different place, there was this tough girl named Booksil. One day, she decided to go to the city to find her little brother who ran away from home. On her way there, she helped an old lady who was choking, but that lady turned out to be a scammer who stole her bag. Poor Booksil had no money and didn't know anyone in the city. All she had was some wild ginseng hidden in her clothes. She hoped to sell it to someone, and that's when she met a rich-looking guy named Sha Jong Won. Book Sil was really begging Jong Won to buy her ginseng. She even convinced him that it was super rare wild ginseng that was over 50 years old. But Jong Won wasn't really into ginseng. He just felt bad for Book Sil, and her constant pestering was getting on his nerves. So he gave in and bought it. He handed Book Sil some cash and also shared his phone number. But Jong Won to confirm the authenticity of the ginseng first before paying the high price to Book Sil. That night, Book Sil decided to save money by sleeping in a sauna. Meanwhile, Louis was living the good life. He could get whatever he wanted with ease, and he had this thing for luxury items, like he was born to own them. Louis had a childhood friend named Bak Marie, who was the daughter of the deputy leader of the Golden Group linked to Louis's family. And Marie worked in the VIP team at the Golden Shopping Mall. Back at Louis's place, his grandma had a dream that he ran away from the castle. She woke up in a panic and fainted. The family doctor told them to reach out to Louis so he could come back to Korea and be with his grandma. In a different place, Louis was in a hurry to catch the earliest flight back to Korea. Meanwhile, his grandma, once she felt better, she announced that she'd be giving all her shares to Louis when he returned to Korea. Deputy Director Bak Sun Gu didn't seem too thrilled with this decision because he was the person expected to become the next leader. They even started prepping for a big welcome party for Louis, but then the family got hit with terrible news. The car Louis was in had an accident when it arrived in Korea, and the driver sadly didn't make it. This news shocked Louis's grandmother all over again. The next day, Book Sil was out and about, handing out flyers to find her missing younger brother. And then she spotted someone wearing the same jacket she'd given to her younger brother. But it wasn't her brother, it was Louis and he seemed totally lost because he had amnesia. Louis, not having a clue about his own identity, decided to stick with Book Sil. So she took him to the police station. When they got there, Detective Nam got a report about her missing brother. On top of that, Book Sil told the detective that the jacket Louis was wearing belonged to her brother because she'd sewn her brother's name inside it. Detective Nam was facing a tough challenge because Louis couldn't remember a thing, not even his own name or who he was. Book Sil, feeling sorry for Louis and hoping that he can help find her brother when his memory returns, decides to invite him to live with her. She's always giving up her money because Louis often buys things from people even though he doesn't have any money himself. Louis doesn't want to be away from Book Sil, and he's scared she might leave him. It turns out that Book Sil now works as a cleaning service employee at the Golden Group Company owned by her grandmother, who's also Louis's grandma. After work, Louis faithfully waits for Book Sil in front of the building. Deputy Director Bake starts to get worried because he thinks he sees someone who looks like Louis. One day, Book Sil invites Louis to go to the sauna with her. She's amazed at how handsome he looks after he showers. Louis is thrilled to be in a place he's never been before, and he asks Book Sil not to leave him. While he's fast asleep at Box Sil friend's place, he even holds onto her little finger. Meanwhile, Murray, who was initially sad about Louis leaving, suddenly feels happy when she learns that her father will become the chairman of the Golden Group after Louis' passing. That morning, she works with a heart full of joy. In a different place, some trouble unfolds when Booksill leaves Louis alone in the sauna. Louis comes across some money on the floor, but when he tries to pick it up, a woman accuses him of stealing and even spits at him. Feeling the pressure, Booksill decides to give in and return the money, and then she asks Louis to leave the sauna with her. Later that night, Booksill accidentally encounters a pickpocket grandmother. She chases after her and manages to catch her. Unfortunately, the grandmother has already spent all of Booksill's money and only has Booksill's mother's dress left. 
Book Sill sees the dress as a precious memento of her mother and asks to trade clothes with the grandmother. In another place, Lewis finds himself in danger as he's confronted by three high school bullies. Book Sill tries to help him, but instead, they both end up getting beaten by the bullies. With nowhere else to go, Book Sill invites Lewis to her workplace. They pass the time with coffee while waiting for morning to come. During their conversation, Book Sill shares about her family and her trauma following the loss of her parents. Then, during work hours, she has to leave Lewis alone again. At the same time, Mary happens to spot Lewis in the women's restroom. She quickly goes after him, but Lewis manages to escape before she can catch him. Mary starts to wonder why there's someone who looks so much like Lewis. Meanwhile, when Book Sill finally finds Lewis, she scolds him for causing trouble in her workplace. Lewis's antics in the office seem to have caused some commotion. After finishing work, Book Sill asks her friend to help her find a place to rent. Her friend takes her to a rooftop house that's quite far away and situated on high ground. Despite the remote location and challenging terrain, Book Sill is thrilled with the extremely low rent. However, her friend keeps a secret about why the rent is so cheap. A few months ago, a tenant passed away in the house. That night, John Wan is shocked to learn that his mother sold Book Sill's ginseng. He feels even more guilty because it turns out the ginseng was authentic and valuable. Moving on to the next day, John Wan has an unfortunate slip in the lobby, where he slips on a puddle of water. He becomes quite angry and confronts the person responsible for cleaning, who turns out to be Book Sill. Book Sill is taken aback when she sees John Wan. She recalls the ginseng and asks John Wan to pay the remaining money he owes her. However, John Wan feels uncomfortable because Book Sill isn't very polite to him. In the heat of the moment, he accidentally pushes her, causing her to fall and faint. Feeling guilty for what happened, John Wan rushes Book Sill to the hospital. After she regains consciousness, he gives her some money as compensation because the money from selling the ginseng rightfully belongs to her. From that point on, Book Sill, who initially had a lot of annoyance towards John Wan, begins to see him as her savior who saved her life. In a different place, Marie, who suspected she saw Lewis in the office yesterday, starts to investigate further. She checks the CCTV footage and is shocked to find someone who looks exactly like Lewis. Meanwhile, Lewis himself has made a new friend, Insung, who happens to be the only son of a Chuma, the rooftop house owner. Insung is wearing the same jacket as Lewis, and they bond over their shared unemployment. Lewis, despite his memory loss, feels a strong connection with Insung. That evening, Book Sil returned home with a joyful expression on her face because she had earned a good amount of money. She excitedly invited Lewis to enjoy a delicious meal and even encouraged him to buy whatever he needed. She shared her plans of starting a new job in the marketing team next week, thanks to the opportunity given by John Wan. Later, as Book Sil was washing Lewis's clothes, Lewis felt a bit embarrassed when she held up his underwear. In Sung, who was there, thought the underwear was a fancy designer piece. Both In Sung and Book Sil playfully began calling Lewis by the name written on the underwear. The following day, Book Sil returned to work, with Louis helping her to look more stylish and adorable by adding some accessories to her outfit. Louis, despite his amnesia, still possessed a talent for fashion. Book Sil's first day at work didn't earn her much respect from some of her colleagues, and she had a lot to learn a lot in her new role. However, Bak Mori was notably kind, assisting Book Sil in learning the ropes. Book Sil was deeply impressed by Mary's kindness and beauty. The next day, in Sung and Lewis approached Book Sil with a proposal for a work contract. They'd offered to help her find Book Nam. Book Sil readily agreed, and after distributing flyers for Book Nam, the trio enjoyed some shopping at the market. Lewis's knack for selecting unique and stylish fashion earned him the nickname Lewis the King of Shopping from In Sung. During their outing, Lewis suddenly felt dizzy and passed out when he heard a penguin music box. It seemed like he regained some of his lost memories but he experienced a severe headache. That night, Book Sill took care of the unconscious Lewis, and she grew curious about the music box that had caused him to faint. The following day, Book Sill decided to investigate the music box, discovering that it was a limited edition souvenir for the Golden Group's 30th anniversary. Meanwhile, the innocent Lewis fell victim to a telephone scam, where someone tried to trick him into transferring money. Feeling guilty and unable to face going home, Lewis left a farewell message for Book Sill. However, he misspelled it and Book Sill and In Sung found it more funny than alarming. Book Sill went in search of Lewis near her house and found him chasing after a dog. When he returned home, 
Book Sills scolded Lewis, not because he spent money, but because he was wandering around without care. Just when Book Sill had forgiven him, Lewis annoyed her again by going on an online shopping spree. This time, he got kicked out and wasn't allowed to stay at home that night. Ajuma felt sorry for Book Sill, who was taking care of Lewis like a maid. She worried that Book Sill might end up being Lewis' lifelong servant, especially since he had amnesia. Meanwhile, when Lewis saw Deputy Director Bake on TV, he had a strange feeling that he somehow knew the leader of the Golden Group. The following day, John One's team received a shock when they saw critical comments about their products online. An account called Shopping King Lewis had written scathing reviews about almost all Golden Group products. Back Murray noticed that the way this account criticized products was similar to Lewis' previous habits. On another occasion, while in some and Lewis were strolling in the Golden Mall, Lewis felt strangely familiar with all the luxury brand shops there. Then, by chance, they bumped into Debt B. Director Back's wife. She was utterly shocked and nearly fainted as if she had seen a ghost when she met Lewis. In some, quickly urged Lewis to leave, fearing they might be chased out by mall security. Later, outside the mall, John Wan remembered Lewis because of the distinctive jacket he wore when they first met. Deputy Director Bake, who was watching from a distance, seemed worried when he saw John Wan talking to someone who looked a lot like Lewis. He approached John Wan and inquired about the man he had just spoken to. However, John Wan didn't have much information about Lewis and didn't recognize him either. Deputy Director Bake then instructed his men to start keeping an eye on John Wan. He also instructed his wife to visit Lewis's grandmother's residence and retrieve something from there. When Book Sill returned home from work, she was annoyed to find her house in disarray, and Lewis was just lounging around. Book Sill decided to teach Lewis how to do household chores and paid him each time he completed the task. Meanwhile, in another place, Deputy Director Back's wife had secretly taken Lewis's baby teeth when he was still young. Unfortunately, Lewis's personal servant knew every nook and cranny of Lewis's room. On another note, Book Sill and Lewis were brainstorming new product ideas for Golden Mall's upcoming birthday. Lewis came up with a concept for an elegant glass bottle called Golden Line. Excited about the idea, Book Sill shared it with Mary the next day. To her dismay, Mary slyly claimed the idea as her own. However, John Wan secretly knew the truth since he had seen Book Sill falling asleep while working on the concept the previous night. Book Sill felt deeply disappointed by Mary's betrayal. When Book Sill returned home, she was filled with anger and disappointment. At the bus stop, she was touched to see Lewis waiting for her, concerned that she might get caught in the rain. That night, Lewis's presence provided comfort and relief from all her disappointments. The following day, Book Sill received an unexpected gift, a beautiful pair of shoes from an anonymous sender. Her friends speculated it was from Marie, who had always been kind to her, and Book Sill considered throwing them away if that was the case. However, John Wan arrived and revealed that the gift was from him. He knew that the idea for the Golden Line bottle truly belonged to Book Sill, and he never doubted her abilities. Then, one night, Book Sill suddenly developed a high fever. It turned out that she had a fear of rain and lightning, which often caused her to get sick. Lewis stayed by her side all night, hoping she would recover soon. The next day, he went to Book Sill's office to bring her some porridge. There, he unexpectedly encountered Deputy Director Bake, who was utterly shocked to see him. Lewis recognized the deputy director from television and greeted him. Book Sill, who had been allowed to leave work early, promptly apologized to Mr. Bake and invited Lewis to come home with her. Meanwhile, the deputy director's subordinates conducted a DNA test on the accident victim in Lewis's car and discovered that the DNA didn't match Lewis's. This led the deputy director to discuss his encounter with someone who resembled Lewis closely and instructed his team to begin monitoring Book Sill starting that day. In a different location, John Wan, concerned about Book Sill's health, decided to visit her at her home. He was taken aback when he found Book Sill and Lewis together at her place. To make matters more awkward, Lewis was only in his underwear. Book Sill tried to explain that she and Lewis didn't have a special relationship. Meanwhile, Lewis was feeling upset and anxious fearing that John Wan might have romantic feelings for Book Sill. In response, John Wan offered Lewis a place to stay, wanting to keep him away from Book Sill. However, Lewis had no interest in John Wan's luxurious house and declined the offer. After a day of investigating Book Sill and Lewis, Deputy Director Back's subordinates reported their findings, revealing the true relationship between Book Sill and Lewis. 
Deputy Director Bake was relieved to know that Lewis was suffering from memory loss, and there was no secret romance between Zhang Wan, Book Sill, and Lewis. The following day, Zhang Wan was preoccupied with concerns about the relationship between Lewis and Book Sill. He decided to take Book Sill on a work trip to Busan to keep her and Lewis apart. During the business trip, Mary appeared annoyed as Zhang Wan unexpectedly invited Book Sill to share the car with him. Meanwhile, Lewis wasted no time in inviting In Sun to accompany him to Busan to follow Book Sill, determined to keep Zhang Wan away from her. In Busan, Book Sill coincidentally crossed paths with Lewis's grandmother, who dearly missed her Branson. However, Fake had yet to reunite Lewis and his grandmother, as Deputy Director Bake suddenly intervened and asked the grandmother to leave, preventing them from meeting. The following day, after enjoying a fun day in Busan, Book Sill came up with a great idea to create a field trip program for Golden Mall customers. Her team members loved her fresh idea, and when she returned home, she celebrated her extended contract. In sum, in Lewis felt proud of Book Sill's success. The next day, Lewis asked Book Sill to join him for a movie. He was excited and wanted to express his feelings for her, so he bought an orange rose symbolizing first love. However, on his way to meet her, Louis had a minor accident. Fortunately, he wasn't seriously hurt, but he was saddened by his crushed roses. It turned out that Mary accidentally hit Louis because she was in a rush. Marie was shocked to see Louis, even though he didn't recognize her. Ajuma, who happened to be passing by, helped Louis get compensation for his medical treatment. When they finally arrived at the cinema, Louis apologized for being late and sweetly gave Book Sill crushed orange rose petals. Book Sill was deeply moved by Lewis's innocence. In a different place, Lewis's personal servant shared with his grandmother his hunch that Lewis might still be alive. He had been tracking the account of Lewis the Shopping King, who often commented on the Golden Mall website. Despite the slim possibility that it was really Lewis, his grandmother urged him to continue investigating. The following day, Detective Nam discovered a clue about Lewis's identity. His colleague informed him that the music box that had caused Lewis to faint was an antique found in an antique bookstore owned by Deputy President Beck's wife. Elsewhere, Lewis's critical comments about Golden Mall products stirred up quite a buzz. John Wan promptly met with Lewis and offered him a place to stay. He was concerned that Lewis's close proximity might jeopardize Booksell's job if the company discovered that Lewis was the mysterious commenter she was close to. That night, Lewis bid farewell to Booksell as he prepared to move in with John Wan. He made sweet promises to her including giving her a real gem ring and inviting her on a future cruise. Book Sill remained silent, touched by Lewis's heartfelt wishes. The following day, when John Wan's parents visited his place, they were surprised to find Lewis sleeping in John Wan's room. Lewis used their misunderstanding to get John Wan kicked out of the house. On top of that, he threw tantrums daily, making John Wan's life increasingly difficult. John Wan suggested that Lewis should get a part-time job but after just a few hours of work, Lewis complained about being tired and refused to continue. He called In Sun for help. During this conversation, In Sun mentioned a murder that had occurred in Book Sill's room a few months ago, expressing concern about her living alone. Upon hearing this, Lewis rushed over to Book Sill's place, running so fast that he didn't realize he was only in his underwear. Starting that night, Lewis said goodbye to John Wan and decided to move back in with Book Sill. She was overjoyed because she had grown accustomed to living with Lewis. The following day, Book Sill received a call from someone claiming to have information about Book Nam. She immediately went to the agreed-upon meeting place, only to discover that the informants were three high school students who had been causing trouble recently. They demanded a sum of money in exchange for the information they possessed and instructed Book Sill to prepare the cash. Meanwhile, Mary spent the day trying to find out where Book Sill lived. She wanted to understand the extent of Booksill's relationship with Lewis. Mary then invited Booksill to meet, and without hesitation, Booksill shared details about her brother and her current living situation, taking care of the amnesiac man at home. After listening to all of Booksill's stories, Mary felt sorry, thinking that Booksill's brother might be the person who died in Lewis's car accident. She decided to give some money to Booksill, who needed it to find information about her brother. Booksill, then went to offer the money she had earned and began her search for her missing brother. Unfortunately, she returned home empty-handed because several of Booknam's friends admitted that they hadn't seen him for a month. Elsewhere, one of the deputy president's subordinates had the misfortune of being attacked by an unknown man at Booksell's house. 
Meanwhile, Lewis, who was waiting for book sale at the bus stop at the time, luckily avoided this unfortunate incident. The news of the attack at Booksill's house caused quite a commotion, especially since there were two unsolved murder cases in the area. Detective Naum and his team were determined to catch the attacker, who remained at large. During this time, Lewis cleverly assisted the police in their investigation. He believed that the shoe prints left behind by the attacker at Booksill's house matched those of a specialized brand of bicycle sports shoes. While they searched for the culprit, Lewis and Booksill were forced to stay at John Wan's house until the situation was deemed safe. John Wan, however, became increasingly bothered by Lewis's presence in his home. However, John Wan was determined to do whatever it took to protect Booksill, and he was growing fond of her. He wanted to ensure her safety and happiness. On the other hand, the deputy president was concerned about his unconscious subordinates and secretly visited them in the hospital. Meanwhile, his wife and grandmother came across a viral news story about a man running away in a shirt on a cold night. Lewis's personal servant was certain that the man in the news was the young master he had been serving. Deputy Director Bake was shocked, especially since he hadn't expected Lewis's grandmother to spot Lewis so soon, and it was all because of his wife's innocent actions. The next day, Melry began helping her father by trying to locate Booksill and Lewis's current residence. Her charm seemed to have an effect on Insung who shared a lot of information about Booksell and Lewis. Lewis's personal servant also started searching for his whereabouts, showing his photo to people in various places. Unfortunately, even though they were close, he couldn't locate Lewis that day. Meanwhile, John Weinstein was overwhelmed with work as their company's anniversary approached. They struggled to find help, so John Wan hired Lewis as a part-time employee to help organize goods. Lewis's good looks, and his deliberate choice to dress neatly in John Wan's clothes captivated the team, but Mary was still fearful of meeting Lewis. Lewis did an excellent job at work, leaving a strong impression on the team. They were particularly impressed by his leadership qualities, which stood out despite him being a part-time worker. He even took the initiative to provide performance evaluations for the VIP division teams, going above and beyond his role. On the other hand, the police successfully apprehended the criminal who had broken into Booksell's house. Detective Nam got in touch with Book Sill and allowed her to return home safely. He also recommended that Lewis be rewarded, as the specific clue about the perpetrator's shoes that Lewis had provided had been instrumental in catching the real culprit. That evening, Lewis treated Book Sill and others with the gift money he had received. He bought a variety of food including sending chicken to John Wan, who was now living alone at home again. The next day, Lewis invited Booksill to relax while enjoying the view of the sea and the waves. He felt a bit jealous of the shoes that John Wan had given her, so he playfully tossed them into the ocean. Lewis affectionately held Booksill and suggested they go shopping for new shoes together. He wanted Booksill to wear only the things he gave her. In different place, Detective Nam finally met the owner of the bookstore. He inquired about the limited edition music box and whether Mrs. Bake knew someone named Lewis. That's when Detective Nam discovered the real identity of Lewis. Meanwhile, Lewis and Booksill were truly enjoying their time together. Booksill felt that this day was the sweetest and most beautiful of her life. She had finally accepted Lewis's sincere feelings for her. Mrs. Bake was quite innocent in all this. She rushed to her husband's office to share the good news that Lewis was alive and Detective Nam had found him. That evening, Deputy President Bake's men visited Booksill and invited Lewis to return to his grandmother's home. Booksill, who was waiting to share Raymond with Lewis, grew confused when he didn't return. So she and Insum went searching for Lewis, but they only found one of his shoes. Detective Nam then called them both and revealed Lewis's true identity. Insum was quite surprised, though Lewis had always carried himself like a nobleman. John Wan remained skeptical since he had never seen the real heir to the Golden Crew not recognizing him despite their frequent encounters. In another location, Deputy Director Bake pretended to be a hero who had successfully found and brought Lewis back home. Grandma and everyone were overjoyed to have Lewis back. In a different place, Detective Nam and John Wan discussed the possibility that Book Nam had died in Lewis's car accident. They both agreed to keep this information from Booksell for now. The next day, Detective Nam continued his investigation at the accident scene. He carefully checked the CCTV footage from various angles and eventually found a video showing Lewis and Book Nam together just before the accident happened. In a different place, when Lewis got home, he warmly welcomed Book Sill and even rolled out a special red carpet for her. He had missed her so much and gave her an orange rose to express his feelings. 
Louis's personal servant visited Ajuma's house to show his gratitude for her care and support during Louis's absence. Meanwhile, Louis himself was feeling a bit down because he had invited Booksild to live with him, but she had declined. However, he understood that just being reunited with his family was a blessing, and as long as they were still under the same sky, he was content. When Mori visits John Wan's house, she pretends to be the owner of Book Sill's old school dress to make John Wan's parents believe that she is his girlfriend. The next day, after gathering a lot of CCTV footage, including the moment when Book Nam took Lewis's car and left Lewis stranded on the side of the road, as well as exchanging clothes with him, Detective Nam finally asked Book Sill to accompany him to the cemetery where they believed Lewis was buried. Detective Nam explained the sequence of events before the accident where Book Nam and his motorcycle gang followed Lewis's car, robbed him, and left him wearing Book Nam's jacket. Book Sil found it hard to believe because she didn't think her brother was capable of such a crime. In different place, Lewis asked Deputy Director Bake why he had acted silent and pretended not to recognize him when they first met. Deputy Director Bake claimed he was shocked because he thought Lewis was dead and then fabricated a story about Lewis's closeness to Mary. However, in Lewis's own memories, Marie had always been mean to him since childhood. At the same time, in Sung and his mother went to sell Lewis's underwear and were happy to earn a lot of money from the real gems on them. In the evening, Lewis's grandmother visited Booksill's house to express her gratitude for Booksill's help. Booksill felt guilty because her late younger brother had harmed Lewis. Grandma hugged Booksill and comforted her, advising her to stay away from Lewis to avoid feeling guilty every time she saw him now that she knew the truth about the accident that killed her younger brother. That night, Booksill made a secret decision to return to her hometown and bid farewell to the people who had always been kind to her, leaving behind only letters. She intentionally left her cell phone so no one could contact her and find her. After a day of trying to hold back and let Booksill go, Lewis finally gave in and went to Booksill's place to inquire about her whereabouts. Without delay, he headed to Booksill's hometown. In another place, John Wan had also arrived there ahead of him. He was deeply concerned about Book Sill's well-being and didn't want her to suffer alone. After learning the truth about what had happened between Book Nam and Lewis, John Wan assisted Book Sill with some heavy housework, and she tackled it with enthusiasm. Meanwhile, Mary grew anxious upon discovering that Book Sill had resigned, and John Wan didn't come to work that day. She worried that John Wan might be with Book Sill and then approached Insung asking him to reveal Booksill's hometown. In another place, Lewis couldn't help but feel jealous of how close John Wan and Booksill had become. He even got into a scuffle with John Wan, though he quickly apologized for his actions. John Wan suggested that Lewis should give Booksill some time since she hadn't yet revealed the real reason for her sudden departure back to her village. The following day, Booksill finally asked Lewis to leave and clarify that she had never had romantic feelings for him. John Wan then invited Lewis to return to Sewell with him. During their journey, John Wan narrowly avoided an accident while trying to evade a reckless motorbike rider. Strangely, at that moment, Lewis appeared to regain his lost memories after sustaining a head injury. Overwhelmed by the recollection of what happened to Book Nam and himself, Lewis was overcome with sorrow and guilt. He couldn't shake the feeling of responsibility for Book Nam's accident, which occurred after Book Nam had borrowed his car. As tears welled up, Lewis couldn't help but reflect on the painful twists of fate involving Book Nam and his own guilt towards Booksill. After a night of deep reflection, Lewis began to come to terms with the painful twists of fate that had connected him to Booksill. However, his feelings for her remained unwavering. He took on his new role as the head of the Golden Group, stepping into the void left by John Wan. The VIP team was thrilled to have Lewis as their leader and he deliberately chose the seat once occupied by Book Sill to begin his work. Elsewhere, Book Sill ventured into a small business of her own, focusing on selling healthy produce from local farmers in her village. John Wan joined her company, and her exceptional sales skills led her to appoint him as the team leader. Lewis couldn't help but feel a pang of jealousy as he watched John Wan remain close to Book Sill, but he realized that John Wan was now the person he could rely on to take care of her. Meanwhile, In Sung took on the role of Lewis's personal driver. Lewis made sure to find time to visit Book Sill's rooftop home regularly, wanting to ensure her comfort and well being. He even asked Ajuma to install a security door for her. Lewis always hid from Book Sill when she returned home, not wanting to make her uncomfortable by their chance encounters. On the flip side, Deputy Director Back remained anxious about Lewis's guilt. 
He feared that Lewis might regain his memory and turn against him, because he had ordered him to drive alone on that fateful day. Meanwhile, Booksill found herself puzzled by her increasingly heavy piggy bank and Ajuma's daily deliveries of food. Unbeknownst to her, Lewis had secretly asked Ajuma to share his cooking with Booksill each day. Although Booksill still held onto memories of Lewis, she tried to keep them hidden. Lewis, too, couldn't resist peeking at Booksill's rooftop house from a distance. One night, when Booksill was traumatized by a thunderstorm, Lewis rushed to check on her. However, John Wen also arrived to comfort her, leaving Lewis feeling jealous and unable to approach her as he had before. The following day, Lewis decided to return to his castle. He bid farewell to his grandmother and visited Ajuma's house to say his goodbyes. And some was in tears, not wanting Lewis to leave, as he had come to see him as a younger brother. Lewis chose to say goodbye to Booksill with a letter containing important notes that had helped him remember all the happy moments they shared. Booksill, while wishing they could remain under the same sky, felt the sadness of his impending departure. The next day, as Lewis's personal servant accompanied him to the airport, Lewis disappeared suddenly, causing great concern for his family. It turned out that Lewis had changed his mind about going abroad and decided to make a detour to Busan to enjoy the local atmosphere. There he unexpectedly encountered Booknam in a park. Booknam was bewildered when Lewis hugged him, slowly recalling that he was the wealthy man his motorbike gang had robbed earlier. Terrified of being taken to the police, Booknam sprinted away, prompting Lewis to search for him desperately. However, a bicycle accident left him with some fragments of his lost memories. Lewis recalls the true events of that fateful day, when he was in trouble with a motorbike gang who had intentionally robbed him. Booksill's younger brother had actually tried to help him by taking him away. He promised to return for him in an hour but left him by the roadside. However, the gang's leader got greedy, took Lewis's car and belongings, and tragically ended up in a fiery accident. Booknam, who witnessed it from a distance, got scared and went into hiding. Hearing Booknam's story, Lewis tries to grasp the situation. He feels immense relief that Book Nam is alive and well. Lewis then contacts John Wan and Detective Nam, sharing the news of finding Book Nam. He seeks their help to reunite Book Sill and Book Nam. John Wan takes Book Sill to Bizen under the pretense of a business trip, and Book Sill remains unsuspecting. While walking alone near the pier, Book Sill spots a beggar, who bears a striking resemblance to Lewis. She approaches him puzzled and concerned about why Lewis, who should be abroad, is in this state. Booksill invites him to share a meal while waiting for Lewis's personal servant to arrive. However, when the servant does show up, Lewis suddenly panics and flees. Booksill chases after him onto a cruise ship, which unexpectedly starts moving while Lewis is still on the pier. The servant then calls Booksill and informs her that they've located Lewis. Booksill regains her composure and happiness. She asks the servant to wait for her because she's on the ship. Subsequently, Detective Naum calls Booksill revealing that Booknam is alive and in bosom. Booksill is initially in disbelief but calls out Booknam's name. Booknam emerges from the ship looking composed. Booksill is overjoyed to see that Booknam is indeed alive and well. Booknam shows her a video of Lewis and explains that it was all part of his future brother-in-law's plan. At the pier's edge, Lewis and the others greet Booksill and Booknam with joyful smiles. Lewis is elated because he kept his promise to find Booknam. Ajuma is equally delighted to witness the reunion of the siblings. She advises Book Nam to stay out of trouble and be a good child. Elsewhere, Detective Nam receives word that the man who was beaten at Book Nam's house has regained consciousness. He rushes to the hospital but finds that the man has already fooled. Meanwhile, Detective Nam discreetly contacts Deputy Director Bake and updates him on the situation with the now conscious man. Deputy Director Bake appears troubled by this news. Shortly afterward, Mrs. Beck receives a call from an unknown person, revealed to be the awakened man who is now blackmailing Deputy Director Beck. In response, Deputy Director Beck hurries to Lewis's house, concerned that Du Jin will expose his wrongdoing. Fortunately, he arrives at Lewis's house first. Lewis, unaware of any suspicions, warmly invites his uncle to share ramen. He sees Deputy Director Beck as family and harbors no doubts about him. Later, when he returns home, Deputy Director Bake encounters Du Jin, who is waiting outside Lewis's house. Du Jin promptly asks for money and plans to leave Seoul, since the police are now aware of his identity. The following day, Lewis began visiting Booksill's office frequently, 
feeling envious of the close relationship between Book Sil and Zhang Wan. Detective Nam called Book Nam and Lewis in for questioning, where they learned the identity of the gang leader involved in Lewis's car accident. Meanwhile, Du Jin faced misfortune as the money he received from Deputy Director Bake was stolen by his sly pickpocket granny, who pretended to choke on food to distract her victim. On another note, during Book Sil's visit to Lewis's house, Lewis's grandmother was elated because she dreamt of ripe mangoes falling, which she believed was a sign of Book Sil being pregnant, bringing her immense joy. However, Book Sil's stomachache was merely from overeating Jie Jiang Noddle. Lewis then asked his servant to give lessons to three troublesome high school girls who used to mistreat Book Sil and cheat her. It turned out that the servant was a former gang leader, and he easily made the mischievous students comply. Lewis tasked them with peeling onions at his house as a way to earn money to repay Book Sil. Meanwhile, Lewis's personal servant had taken up a new role as a tutor for Book Sil's academically challenged brother, a stark contrast to her intelligent and diligent older sister. Next, Lewis extended an invitation to Zhang Wan and Book Sil to join the Golden Group while still managing their vegetable and fruit business as a subsidiary of the company. That evening, Lewis proposed to Book Sil on the rooftop. He left a jewel ring on the dining table as a surprise and poured his heart out to her, expressing his desire to spend the rest of his life with her. Book Sil was deeply moved by Lewis's secret visits to her home and all the help he provided. The following day, when Lewis visited Mr. Beck's wife's bookstore, he fondly remembered the love she had shown him since he was young. Suddenly, Du Jin arrived in search of Mr. Bake. Lewis seemed to recognize Du Jin's face, but couldn't recall exactly. Mr. Bake intervened and invited Du Jin to his house, where Du Jin requested more money due to having his previous funds stolen by the pickpocket granny. Lewis then went to Booksill's place, wanting to spend the entire day together. He bought numerous items for both of them and offered to cook a delicious meal for Booksill, although he ended up creating a bit of a mess. Lewis invited his entire team for a vacation at his family villa, where he and John Wan wore limited edition jackets from the first and 100 series. They enjoyed various outdoor activities with enthusiasm. As for sleeping arrangements, Lewis and Zhang Wan shared a tent while Book Sil roomed with Marie. Meanwhile, Du Jin, who feels betrayed by Deputy Director Bake, starts plotting his revenge. He's actually misunderstood, fearing the consequences of his own crime while hiding in Mr. Bake's wife's bookstore. He's worried that Mr. Bake might report him to the police. Detective Nam, who visits Mr. Bake's wife's shop, is only there to buy books, but Du Jin's anxiety clouds his judgment. Mr. Bake had actually prepared money for Du Jin, but by the time he arrived, Du Jin had already left the bookstore. That evening, Lewis invited Book Sil to meet in the villa garden, planning to give her a special gift. However, Book Sil gets kidnapped by Do Jin. Lewis searches to her desperately and enlists the help of his friends, but they can't locate her. Elsewhere, Do Jin calls Mr. Bake and claims he has kidnapped Marie. He demands a ransom for her safe return. Mr. Bake tries to call Marie's cell phone, worried for her safety, but he's relieved to find out that it's actually Book Sil who has been kidnapped. Mr. Bake is willing to pay the ransom to get Book Sil back. Meanwhile, Lewis is overwhelmed with guilt, believing that Book Sil got kidnapped because of him. On the flip side, Du Jin is equally confused, mistakenly thinking he kidnapped Marie. Du Jin then faces more misfortune as the car he's driving gets into an accident. Both Du Jin and Book Sil are rushed to the hospital. Detective Nam recognizes Du Jin as the victim of a beating at Book Sil's rooftop house in the past. Detective Nam contacts Mr. Bake informing him that Du Jin is now in the hospital. Mr. Bake is even more baffled, finding the situation increasingly complicated. Lewis, on the other hand, is immensely relieved that Book Sil's injuries are not severe. In a different location, Mr. Bake, feeling weary, finally decides to surrender and admit his mistakes. He asks his wife to return a box that belonged to Lewis from his childhood. That night, Lewis begins to feel differently about Mr. Bake, starting from the time of the accident. He pays Mr. Bake a visit, and Mr. Bake promptly apologizes to Lewis, regretting his greed-driven actions. The following day, Lewis accompanies Mr. Bake to the police station to confess everything to Detective Nam. Elsewhere, Du Jin regains consciousness and is promptly taken into police custody. Unfortunately, Du Jin, at that moment, falsely accuses Mr. Bake of orchestrating all the crimes he committed, including the kidnapping of Bookso. Mr. Bake denies these accusations but lacks evidence to support his claims. 
Lewis took it upon himself to gather evidence to clear Mr. Beck's name, because he firmly believed Mr. Beck was not responsible for all the crimes. He discovered that he had been unknowingly shadowing Mr. Beck's wife all this time. He collected photographic evidence of everyone who visited Mr. Beck's wife's bookstore. Additionally, Lewis proved that Du Jin had indeed blackmailed Mr. Beck twice. In the process of dealing with Du Jin's case, Detective Nam finally succeeded in apprehending the grandmother, a notorious pickpocket who had been causing trouble. Initially, the grandmother denied her crimes and feigned weakness, but Book Sill became one of her victims, leading to her capture. Recorded evidence from Du Jin's bag, which was previously stolen by the grandmother, showed that Mr. Bake never intended to harm Lewis from the beginning. This newfound evidence earned Mr. Bach leniency, and he was deeply grateful to Book Sill and Lewis for obtaining it. Following these events, Lewis invited Book Sill to purchase a gift for his grandmother, using the money he earned from his job. He intentionally selected a beautiful pair of red shoes as a present. Tragically, the joy of giving the gift was short-lived, as Lewis's grandmother passed away the next day. Her death was a profound loss for those who held her dear. Several days after the grandmother's passing, Mr. Beck's wife called Lewis to return his childhood treasure box. Among the box's contents was a cassette recording of the Golden Group's 30th anniversary celebration, during which Booksill's parents attended as Lucky Mall winners. Lewis invited Booksill to watch the documentary together since Booksill, abandoned by her parents at a young age, had no photos of them and had begun to forget their faces. At the Golden Group's 30th anniversary celebration, Book Sill decided to give her cherished limited edition music box to Lewis, who was visibly moved and emotional at the time. Young Lewis inquired about Book Sill's name, and she playfully introduced herself as Koboshi. Little did they know that this chance encounter would eventually lead to them becoming life partners. The story concludes with the heartwarming marriage between Lewis's personal servant and the loyal butler, who had always held a special place in his heart. The moral lesson of this story reminds us that true kindness and selflessness can forge unexpected and beautiful connections in our lives. Despite their contrasting backgrounds and challenges, Book Sill and Lewis find each other and build meaningful relationships through acts of compassion and empathy.